Get in, nerds. We are playing Victoria 3. We are just about ready to get this Civil War started. And it is beginning right now. Uh, do I still have this army on defense? Yes, I do. That is perfect. So, we are pressing forward over here. Got a nice battle here in the, in the, in the forest down here. Denmark is improving relations. That's chill. Let's see. We got we are winning here, so I'm feeling pretty confident about that. We also should be winning battles in the north. I'm hoping that means these two fronts will merge and that will allow us to continue to have a really solid force comparison. There's a battle one. Looks like that was in Piaui, so that should be good. We are still continuing to build up this government admins. We'll be getting iron mines after that. How is this battle going? Good. We're getting we're getting there. We're getting there. They should be fleeing pretty soon. And excellent. Alright, so that's going well. And sure enough, we have uh, merged these two fronts. I'm actually going to take this army to the southern front. Um, because force comparison on the northern front looks very good, but the southern front's pretty tight. So, I think if we can get units there. Oh, our fleet's still over here. We need these guys over here. And let's see if we can ban slavery. Uh, again, our target is Minas Gerais. That's the rebel capital. And let's see how our politics have changed. Politics are still a little funny because we've got everyone together in the Liberal Party. But we'll see how that goes. And now that this army is on the way, perfect. Alright, so, we have successfully banned uh, slavery. And that's given us the last voyage of the Andorinha event. With the Brazilian slave trade banned and suppressed at last, the mandate, be it real or imagined, of the Royal Navy to harass our shipping has passed, drastically improving our, relation our diplomatic relationship between our country and Great Britain. Attention all seamen. Our most magnanimous emperor and the Cortes have ratified a new law forbidding the importation of new slaves. We have proven today that we are every bit the equal of Britain. As such, they no longer have the authority to play the schoolyard bully upon our vessels. To mark this day, every man may have a double ration of rum tonight. The end of an era. All right. Uh, and that is the end of the political movement to disband, uh, to um, keep slavery... Uh, well, that's the end of the political movement to ban slavery, because we've successfully banned slavery. Um, that should give us some, some loyalists. I don't think it's gotten us that many, but, uh, you know, I wasn't paying that close attention. Um, we now have both of our armies on this front. So let's go ahead and get them on advance. And this army is already on advance, so that's perfect. So now we've got another event for the Invisible Man. The Empty Seat. A clandestine meeting organized by the industrialists has been discovered. While they swear their purpose is purely financial, many are those who suspect their connection to the assassination plotters. The voices reach the street remarkably clear, considering their intentions. The sound of glass can only be heard from the interior, however. Their faces lose clarity when reflected in the wine. They've been there all day, a florist says, her callous hands po pointing with disdain. Saw them coming when I was opening the shop. They didn't even come out for lunch. Looks like it was just a party. Industrialists happier. Industrialists are feeling very happy with us right now. Um, rather suspicious indeed. Industrialists will be uh, upset. Or rural folk. Uh, ma worse things have been said about the rural folk. That makes the rural folk mad. The rural folk are in opposition. They're very angry about the change to, uh, to, to banning slavery. But we did what we had to do. Um, you know, I think I'm going to have to sacrifice some of the goodwill of the industrialists to move the assassination uh, discovery plot forward. All right, perfect. There's been some progress towards discovering the assassination plotters. That's excellent. Uh, why are we do down bad over here? What happened? Where's my... Where's my... Hold on. Why are you down here? <sighs> well, that's that's really really unfortunate. Um, that, I don't need. There's no reason for them to have left the front. 
So we'll see how that plays out. And happily, our armies are on their way back. All right, cool. Horse comparison's back to good, and it's going to be better in a second once the actual army arrives. All right, now it's very good. And now we've got the rebel capital. So now they're losing war support at a pretty healthy rate. So I'm feeling pretty good overall. Battles over here are both going well. So we might have a front merge again as we get going here. Perfect. We are getting a lot of occupation in Mato Grosso as well. Uh, let's make sure that we don't have... Okay, we're losing here, but that's okay. Looks like our side has won the majority of battles. Yes, and has very solid occupation. So that's pretty good. Law enforcement investment is up to two. Are we bringing it up to three? Yes, we are. Very good. Contested waters. In a scathing critique of the government, Admiral Grenfell has made public the Admiralty's disappointments that our Navy is eclipsed by such unworthy powers as the British East India Company. This is a national humiliation for our armed forces. It's an outrage, man, an outrage. These pompous British East India Company fools would mock Brazil and debase your men. Surely our constitutional empire is one of respect, Pedro. Take it back from them. We must do better. Oh, the armed forces do not like that our Navy is unworthy. Winning a victory here. Very good. So, let me see if we still have... Okay, and we've, we've lost our debuff from keeping slavery, so that's very good. Uh, unfortunately, the um, rural folk are still slavers, but uh, we could go to homesteading. The only people who will be upset by that are the landowners, and they're marginalized uh, because we... Um, 9.8%, because they're in open revolt at this point. Um, so I might be able to get away with flipping over from tenant farmers to homesteading just on that alone. 8.9%, uh, an act with 21% chance to progress. Ooh, that's a, good, that's a good question. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the... Uh, landed gentry are just completely out of power to just bash forward with that. Uh, force comparison on the southern front is looking very, very weak. So I'm actually going to put both of these armies back on defense. And let me see. What's... So defense is just 10% defense. Delaying tactics is extra morale loss, but increased surprise maneuver chance and camouflage chance. I don't know that that's better. Uh, why is this army... Oh, that's morale. I thought it was an organization problem. All right. So we just need to make sure that we're not just kind of wantonly losing territory here. Uh, and that'll mean making sure that this area stays defended. We've got conscripts raised, but these armies are looking really, really rough in terms of manpower. I'm going to go ahead and... Did I increase... Yes, I increased military wages already. So let's take a look at mobilization options. Um, you know, I've got a ton of sugar in the... Uh, in the customs union, so let's go ahead and make that happen. Oh, finally, we got these fronts merged. Excellent. And... How's tobacco looking in the customs union? I think I can afford to give my armed forces a lot of tobacco. Let's see. Tobacco is pretty cheap. We already did sugar, so we got a barracks and puts for sugar. And then the other one is liquor. Where are we with liquor? Liquor's affordable, but not that affordable. Um, let's go ahead and throw tobacco in there, though. All right, now we've got an excellent force comparison. I think our other... Um, I think I think we're, we're getting some of the benefit of front chicanery right now because the enemy's armies are just kind of all over the place. So I'm going to set everyone on advance and see if that lets us snag a cheeky uh, victory here. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. All right, perfect, excellent. Hey, nice. All right, let's see if we can keep up the momentum. We're getting a bunch of occupation in Mato Grosso right now, and we just got 
summon uh, Goyas. So I'm feeling pretty confident overall. Uh, UK wants a trade agreement. I will accept. That's completely fine with me. I love having big trading partners. I've got a lot of influence to play with right now. So I think... Let's see. I'm going to go back to improving relations with the USA. Oh, USA has gone... Uh, Gone to an autocracy. The southern planters overthrew the government. That's interesting. Let's see. France we still have excellent relations with. UK we have excellent relations with. What about Austria? Austria, we have good relations with Austria. Bad relations with Prussia. Let's go ahead and improve relations with them. And Russia, we're cordial and we are continuing. Relation improvement with Russia is an ongoing process. Whew. So, a brutal civil war, but uh, homesteading is looking extremely likely as long as the landowners are completely frozen out of the government on account of they openly rebelled. And we are one step closer to uh, winning our civil war. We do have an integration action available here. Uh, integrate the Sulistas. So let's go ahead and hit that button. The integration of the Sulistas, the Sulista people of the Parana and Iguazu and the Cowboys of the South have reconciled with the central government and the growing Brazilian national movement. Sun, sky, earth, and color, these are what are what is most beautiful about our country, and more what makes Brazil the place where everything planted grows. But father, why can we not keep our hard earnings for ourselves? It is only fair since we toil for it. There's the end of our civil war. Uh, and who do you think makes your tools? My shoes, your mother's clothes. Brazil needs our cotton and coffee as much as we need their iron and milk. We are stronger together, son. Oh, beloved idolized homeland, hail, hail. And the Sulista Pops are becoming uh, Brazilian as well. So, landowners are no longer influential. They're fully marginalized with 0% clout. They will gain it back over the course of the next five years, but not nearly as much of it, especially if we can pass homesteading, which I'm really hoping we do. So, uh, cash flow is looking really good. Allies of convenience. Just as the homesteading law looked ready to topple, the rural folk found itself rallying with the assistance of Aurelio Osorio. It, is n it now has the support it needs to pass without compromise. When support was called, the unlikeliest hand in the audience rose. Another hand lifted and a third behind them. The faction with the least to gain from its passage, yet nothing to lose either way, assents. Cheers of exuberance followed howls of defeat as the law charged on ahead. We welcome their support. 1% of Brazilian pops become more loyalist. Open to compromise, 5% enactment chance. Or tally this favor, they certainly will. Um, stronger Aurelio Osorio, that's the rural folk. Stronger Catholic Church. Brazil gets an Ackman chance. I'm going to go with the first one. Uh, I love having Loyalist Pops. And 1% is a nice big swath of our country. Um, loyalist numbers are going way up, which I'm feeling good about. Organized crime. Criminal organizations have be begun operating in Bajo Paraguay. It doesn't matter if we arrest one person or solve one crime. It will keep going unless we go all the way to the top. Put some funds into stamping out the organizations, or I'm sure the authorities can handle it. Um... If I lose a little bit of authority... Okay, so let's see. If I lose a little bit of authority, I've got 937 authority, so that's about one uh, consumption tax worth. Uh, so 1,000 is less. So we're going to put some money into it. Shazam. All right, so now I've got a little bit of liberty to kind of do as I like. Um, because they destroyed our construction sectors. Um, that's great. Great, great job, Rebels. All right, so that's that's what's happening right now. Um, all right, uh, iron in the customs union is bad. Oh, that's really bad. Oh, I don't love that one bit. Um, that's okay, though. We'll put the ones in Bahia and Iron Frame, just to get them going a little faster. Uh, we're completely solid on gold reserves, so we don't need to worry about gold at all. Um, we're over our limit, actually. So yeah, let's get some more uh, let's get some more uh, construction sectors built. Uh, we definitely need more in both areas. Rio de Janeiro has a bunch of unemployed pops at this point, so we'll throw those into the top. We got a government admin being builded in Minas Gerais. Uh, I don't love that because again, Minas Gerais is 
Oh, I guess they destroyed the construction sector there in order to gain, uh, in order to have enough infrastructure to be able to afford uh, a government admin building. That's um, that's really that's really classy. We are working on railways. We've almost got that done. Let's go ahead and um, normalize our production. Oh, interesting. So, actually. We're gonna have to. We're gonna need to put a look at these individually. So rice farms certainly don't need uh, fig orchards. Uh, don't need to be having tools. If we have tools. Yeah, that costs them too much. Um, maize farms, same deal. Single crop, ox powered. Uh, livestock ranches. We've been doing open air uh, stockyards for a long time. It looks like these ones are going to be less profitable, so we'll keep open air stockyards. Yeah, I know, but you'll be. Oh, I guess now they think they'll be more profitable from the others. All right, well let's let's do slaughterhouses then. They're still not very profitable. That's all right. Uh, iron mines. We definitely need Atmo pump engine for all of them. Gold mines, same thing. That puts us in a coal shortage. Which will be met by our growing trade, will it not? Yes. Perfect. All right. Getting back to buildings. Don't have any other options for livestock ranches. Uh, tooling workshops. That's right. We still have one workshop using pig iron tools. We've got the iron and we will have more. So let's go ahead and get... Oh, we have access to seal tools, finally. Um, that's actually very good, but we need to make some... Um, we need to make some steel mills before that can work. Uh, sulfite piping. How much sulfur have we got in the customs union right now? We got 13, and it's virtually all coming in from trade routes. We don't have any sulfur mines. I bet our vassal has them. We've got access to coal mines in the south here. So let's go ahead. We've got plenty of labor and infrastructure in Barana and Rio Grande do Sul. So let's build a couple in Rio Grande do Sul, and that'll end our, our dependence on foreign coal, at least for now. Farmers Co-op Champions Homesteading. Seeking to eliminate the need of middlemen by bringing together farmers, laborers, and shopkeepers in a cooperatively owned business, a newly formed farmers cooperative in Guerra, designed to improve the lot of their constituent members, have used their considerable local influence to push for the enactment of homesteading. Each family had come together, whether they made chairs, picked fruit, or tallied who sold what. It was agreed what the best chance of a future what the, that the best chance of a future was to arrest control of where everything went. Fruits and furniture would stay under everyone's reach. Vegetables and vanities would be sold at a fair price, with fair splits going to those who stock the shelves. It would never be much, but nobody would go hungry either. Peasants influencing Rio de Janeiro, how quaint, 10% enactment chance, or laud their model of business as a vision for tomorrow's world. Stronger rural folk, uh, peasants, laborers, and shopkeepers become more loyalist. I, oh, Justin Guerra. Um, let's go with the first one. I want to get this enactment chance. I want to get this going before the uh, landowners become strong enough to actually try to put an end to this situation. Uh, we are continuing to increase investment in law enforcement, and it looks like our ability to do so is continuing to go up, so I think I might... Well, let's see where we are at uh, from a bureaucracy perspective when we hit level 3. Plus, I want to make sure that we can prevent this assassination. The Invisible Man, an empty seat. This is just that same event. Um, worst things have been said about the landowners. I'm going to... So I'm going to go with my... Uh, implicate someone else. This will advance our progress. I'm going to advance our progress. We're almost certain about who the assassination plotters are. And again, uh, the landowners being salty does not bother me one bit. They have no power here. Um, they will be very, very salty for a long, long time. But that's... They're just going to have to deal with it because they've got to modernize the country. We have this Brazilian naval power mission, but um, I got other things to worry about here. So we're getting those construction sectors built up. That's going to increase our overall ability to 
output stuff, so I'm feeling pretty confident overall. We actually have two uh, construction lines run. Oh, nope, never mind. <laughs> I thought we had two construction lines running, but we did not. So that's going to increase the iron demands on our market. Let's import a little bit of iron from uh, America. Uh, we lost a general. Let's check out our armies. All right, 4th Brazilian Army needs a general. This guy is a traditionalist, but that's okay. So, we've got... It's a pretty good army. This is the army that was run by the... Um, it was the rebels, I think. They built a pretty solid force, to be completely honest. Hmm. Neat. Uh, Ejercito de Amazonas, once again, is having a real problem hiring, and I... Again, I don't... I really don't know how to how to deal with this situation. The Sulistas are... have become Brazilian at this point, right? Afro-Brazilian, Afro-Brazilian. Platinean, Mongo, Afro-Caribbean. Huh, I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, let's see what else our market needs. Market needs plenty of coal. Well, we're building up coal mines. Let's go ahead and set the coal mines to being superior production methods. That will pump engine away. And then, after that, we need some steel mills. There is no question that we need steel mills. So, where to put them? I think Rio de Janeiro is going to be the right place. We'll put two sets of steel mills in Rio de Janeiro. So what that'll do is that'll output uh, 65 steel. We'll actually put one. I'm going to go to Bessemer process immediately. So that's going to take some coal and some iron. But it's going to... Excellent. We've got a success over here. So we're at, we've had three good events. We're at 65% now. So I'm hoping we can just knock out the next few steps pretty quickly. Maybe we only need one steel mill for now. So this is going to output 90 steel. If we switch all of our tooling over to steel tools, that's going to cost us 20 steel per tooling workshop. That's going to be 90. So, that's, so we're going to have 90. That's going to be 120. There's intensive agriculture. Very good. Um, I think I can. I think I can live on that. A trickle of beans. Brazil holds vast potential. A large expanse of arable land, a perfect climate for growth of valuable cash crops. This wealth may hold the key to resolving the precarious situation of the Brazilian economy post-independence. At full extent, the total area once controlled by Portugal stretched over a fifth of the continent. Brazil now stretches over those lands, with Venus waterways feeding savannas, wetlands, rainforests, rolling hills, and mountains alike. Given the right field of life, anything known to man could grow somewhere here. But such vastness would need time, effort, and a river of blood to be tamed for use. Order and progress will not wait for long. An export economy will bring us into modernity, plus trade route competitiveness, and extra plantations throughput, or the efforts of our planters should be continued. Um, additional plantations throughput and landowners happy. Um, I'm going to go... Oh, that's. So hear me out here. I'm actually going to go with the second one. The landowners being really salty with me right now is going to be over, but I get this bonus for 20 years, and I could really use them going back to being basically okay. Um, we have an event called the River of Coffee. Uh, interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. I also want to look at Brazilian naval power. We're getting on towards the end of the episode at this point, but I'm just going to read you these events, and we'll go a little bit longer. So... Brazil is blessed with a vast amount of fertile farmland and a climate suited to the growing of highly profitable cash crops. This provides a great chance to enrich the nation and propel Brazilian products into worldwide prominence. We'll complete, if at least one of these, Brazil is the leading producer of meat, coffee, or sugar. Uh, you need to be the leading producer of at least one. We're currently the leading producer of coffee. Um, we need to increase the buy orders of coffee within the Brazilian market by 150%. And we need to have equal to or greater than 125 levels of plantation buildings. So, how many levels of plantation buildings have we got so far? We got two levels of vineyards. 
11 levels of cotton plantations, 2 levels of dye plantations, 1 level of tea plantations, 8 levels of tobacco plantations, 3 of sugar, 15 of bananas. So, total... Did I say 22 of coffee? I don't remember. So total, that's 24, 33, 35, 36, 44, 47, and 62. So we're going to basically need to double our uh, our number of plantation buildings. Um, we're not really going anywhere fast with this, but that's all right. Do we have some food industries? We do. Let's start producing liquor out of them. That's going to at least create a baseline market for sugar in our customs union. That's going to make our sugar plantations much more profitable. Um, all right, so we've got access to soil enriching farming at this point. So let me see. We can produce five fertilizer per livestock ranch, so 50 fertilizer out of livestock ranches alone. If we bring these other farms up, these are going to cost 20 fertilizer each. So we're going to need fertilizer plants before we can actually increase the productivity of our uh of our of our maize farms but our rice farms we can go right now off of the 50 that we'll be producing uh through increased wool gathering do i want to do that it's really not much it's it's so much actually let's go ahead and queue in some fertilizer plants we're also going to need explosives factories later so we'll just go ahead and do that and we'll put them right here in rio de janeiro um that's going to be our industrial center i don't think anyone's going to be surprised by that uh, not motor industry. Well, we're going to need motor industries as well, so let's go ahead and queue those in. That's interesting. I didn't realize we had the ability to produce motor industries already. Um, yeah, we're building a big industrial center in Rio de Janeiro. Again, nobody should be surprised by that. That's our capital. Uh, number of loyalists is looking really, really solid. Standard of living has gone way up, um, probably because we ended slavery. And this is going to hopefully increase standard of living further by uh, taking all that profit away from the landowners and putting it in the hands of the rural folk. Again, the rural folk are pro-slavery. I'm hoping that goes away. There should be an event once we've been uh, not having slavery for a long enough time to just get that dealt with and knocked out. I could fight myself a war. I've got so much cash in the pot. Actually, let's, let's knock taxes down. I can go ahead and and in fact, I can reduce taxes to the minimum amount. I can, you know, I can afford to live it at at a at a loss for a bit while we're just increasing all of our stuff. This gets us up to a legitimate government, which is pretty solid. We're not getting. Hang on, I think that additional loyalists per month thing will will sort itself out once we get into the new year. And uh, our rural folk are actually happy. The um, the opposing the move to slave. Excellent. To slavery banned is decaying, but the bonus from going to uh, homesteading is not because we're still enacting this. Uh, so if we can get that done, that'll be great. And then this will give us 244,000 more loyalists, which will be really, really nice if we can pull that off. Population is stable. Let's go ahead and... Let me see. Where are we with the assassination plot? We're at 20 out of 24, so I'm thinking I'm pretty confident about that. Let's take a look at the government. We have no additional loyalists per month. Well, that's unfortunate. That makes me very sad, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and increase education back up, and that's going to help increase the strength of our intelligentsia once again. We're actually powerful at this point with the landowners totally, totally borked in their ability to do freaking anything. Whew. All right. That said, though, um, that's going to be all the time we have for today, friends. Uh, we'll have to pick it up next time. I've had fun. I hope you all have had fun as well. And I will see you on the other side.